Right, hello and welcome to Theme Park Euphoria. Now, we're taking a break from the Clacton Pier videos uh, to bring you a vlog from the Thunderworld event here in Bristol. Um, it's literally only about 14 miles from where I live, so I just couldn't not come here. It's kind of like an annual thing for me. I've been going to everyone that's been taking place here since 2009. So, yeah, it's kind of like, it has a special place in my heart, this event. Um, now, uh, I've actually arrived about 50 minutes before opening because I wanted to kind of get here before everyone else did and get some photos of everything before uh, all the people started coming in and I have thankfully allowed plenty of time because uh, it's not probably not going to be a while until the gates start opening but at least I got here and I managed to beat the crowds um, so I'll take you in have a show you what's going to be about there maybe some stuff that's new I don't think it's that much different from them from last year um, but I do know there's one new addition here and one ride that's making its first outing under a new owner. But um, let's just stop dabbling on and let's take you around Thunderworld Bristol 2023. So as you come to the entrance gate for Thunderworld this year, there is one thing new that you'll notice for 2023. Look at this. The brand new theming and sign on the front entrance gate. It looks like it's been painted as well very nicely. So there we have it, Thunderworld theme park. Really liking the work that's been on, done on this. Probably, was it Mark Abbott? I don't know, because Mark Abbott usually does very distinctive work, but take a good look at this. But that's actually a lot better than the previous sign that they had on, because they used to have, because while um, the Mellors ran it, it used to have a, uh, impact font on the top there and Thunder World logo either side and has some red lighting on it and that was while the Mellors group had it and the Matthews family took over and have had that on there ever since until now because I am loving the uh sorry <laughs> yeah but I'm really loving it so um stop dangling on let's just get on with it and see what this place has to offer for this year So I'll just give a little pan around so you can get a taster of what is here. Um, I will be covering most of it, so I'll get some close-ups of each individual thing and all the most of the major stuff, not the children's rides for, um, for reasons I won't publicly comment on. But um, one thing I forgot to mention at the opening of the video is um, new for Thunderworld this year is actually a new all-day system. So the, it's still four-hour four hour sessions in place from when you arrive or you can upgrade to have a all day arrival and you can get to ride until closing time. So I decided to go for the all day um, because of so much stuff that I want to cover. I want to basically include um, time to make a vlog out of this as well, as well as getting some stuff done for the Fair Ride channel. Um, and the one thing I do want, I will be coming to this later of course, but it is a special occasion for this crazy frog because it is actually opening for the first time with its new owner, A.B. Morris. So AB purchased this from Perrin Stevens, who previously opened it at um, Barry Island during the pandemic. And it's had a few ownership changes uh, over the years. I forget how old it is, but it's actually been done up really nicely. So we've got new green and yellow cars. Really, really liking the work that's been done. So I'm definitely checking this out. So I'm gonna be kicking off the vlog here as I did last year with the Crazy Mouse roller coaster, because um, I wanna get on this thing before it gets too busy. And it remains relatively unchanged from last year. I am surprised that it's still got the Crazy Mouse name because knowing Darren, I would have expected him to go with the Spinning Coaster name and have a similar sign that the Bewalder family has in the Netherlands. But new to this coast this year is actually got new lighting on the station. So you've got hazard lighting and also some stars on there as well. Really, really nice, really nice touch. Um, but gonna hop on this before the queues get crazy. Let's get on the crazy mouse.
Okay, so kicking off the vlog with the crazy mouse, and it is how I kicked off the day as well earlier. That was, oh, that was a bit rougher than usual. Um, but yeah, I kicked the day off of this earlier, but that was while I was filming stuff for the other channel. I'm filming separate vlog, vlogs, filming separate on my POVs for this one, so that each has their own individual content, and also so I don't end up with copyright strikes, because I do end up being, well, not strikes, they're more claims, so I end up being in a copyright battle with myself. But anyway, here we are on Crazy Mouse. You see Morris's new frogs down there. We're we'll definitely getting on those later. <laughs> so it's, ooh. And here comes the first dip. Ah. <laughs> Sharp stop, but we made it. <laughs> well, it's always good fun to get back on a Revachon spinning coaster, despite it being a bit um, rough at the start and a little bit rough through place. But I think that might have just been a case of with the particular car that I was on. But um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm liking what Darren has done with the coaster so far, particularly with the train and the new lights on the front. And I'm looking forward to seeing what Darren does next with it now. While well, it's in front of me, got to get on this, the one of a kind in the world, KMG 60 meter high swing. So this is the only Starflyer of this model, and it's the only KMG machine, 60 meters high. And while it's in front of me, I just literally just missed this cycle, but I'm um, going to wait for the next one and then we'll get on Sky Swing. So I just encountered some issues recording and I don't know what happened. Um, but here we are on uh, Sky Swing, which has to be my favorite star flyer. And that's not just because it's a KMG machine, but in general, the riding and handling and how smooth it is. And also just how much of a feat of engineering it is. Because as soon as we got up, I'll point back up to that in a second. Um, but as I was saying, I just did encounter an issue just as I was filming. I don't know what was going on. And I've been experiencing some reliability issues with the GoPro recently, my GoPro Hero 7. Um, I'm probably gonna end up uh, going to something else that isn't a GoPro, because I have got my eye on something else. Um, but until then, we get to appreciate some views of Sky Swing, and this isn't even the best of it, because this isn't even the highest we've got. We've still got quite a way up to go. Here we go, so you can just about see as the thickness of the tower decreases the interlocking system and it really is just amazing to me to just look at. I'd be curious to know how a drop tower would would go with this type of um, with this type of structural technique. In terms of just how it would drop, especially a freefall tower, it should be doable, but uh, I'm quite not um, 
I do sort of engineering stuff, but uh, rides aren't necessarily my field when it comes to that. But look at this. Absolutely incredible. And that, there's a couple of bits that were just pointed out that I wondered what they were for or who owns them. We've got that little greenhouse down there and that little, well I say little, it's actually quite big, that big grey tower and we're coming down. There's also an Asda petrol station which I swear wasn't there last year. Coming down. practical thing about this mechanism as well is because of the way the tower collapses when they're pulling up when they're pulling down it's able to make the whole thing come on just two loads because normally you probably need about four for a tower of this height four or three maybe But yeah, I always enjoy riding this thing. And down we go. So I don't know what happened there. I just had encountered some issues with the GoPro just as we were taking off. But I always love getting back on this thing. It's always so much fun to ride it's easily my favorite star flight just because of how smooth it is and just the engineering behind it absolutely love it now um next up moving on uh so we're going to be going on to the frogs down there and it's literally just stops just as i got off i wanted to get a bit of on road footage so a couple of attractions um meteorite the roundup which was on the same position last year um not really gonna go, go on that or get some on ride footage because i don't tend to bother with roundups i don't get that much of a kick from them somehow you've got ab morris's uh simulator down there showing three former alton towers rides at, well i say former there's one still in the package um but here it is now new to thunder world this year and i think new to the southwest is ab morris's crazy frog so this is the safeco uh machine which has had a few ownership changes in its lifetime um i think the longest person to have had it was warren taylor up in scotland and ab bought this from parent stevens at the end of 2022 and he has put some work into it but while it doesn't seem to be that busy i should be able to get on the next ride of ab morris's recently purchased crazy frog Okay, so here we go on Crazy Frogs. Um, as I said, recently purchased by Avery Morris, and he has done some works on the pneumatics uh, over the winter. So they will sound a bit different, and the riding and handling will be a bit different. And I'll admit, I do actually really like the riding and handling, and I do prefer the noise that the pneumatics make, as they're a, they're a bit quieter than the other ones usually are. Also, um, AB has painted the cars up nicely, so you may have noticed, um, if you saw these at Barry Islands, you'll notice the um, colour scheme on the cars are a bit different, so they're now yellow and green, more frog-like colours. That looks really good, really matches the personality of the machine. As you may have noticed that the cycle on here is quite different than but here we go yeah so the cycle is <laughs> i'll come back to that when the pneumatics are going like for example then um but different cycle than usual because um ab is still getting used to the machine it's quite a new machine 
he's bought this in favour of the reverse bungee, which he also which he sold at the end of 2022. 20, but this rides really nicely. a bit quieter than it was before. Um, well, the, the crazy mouse view hasn't really gone down that much. I have the feeling it could be a bit busier down that end there. He's happy with it. It's definitely doing him good. And the pneumatics are discharging. But this is a really, really good machine. And it seems to be even better with the pneumatic with the work that AB has done on the pneumatics. <laughs> Actually really enjoyed that and yeah um, a really really good smooth machine and I know it did seem to spend a bit of time in the air more than bouncing about but keep in mind AB has literally just brought these out it's the very first place he's opened with this ride so he's getting used to it but um as the longer that AB does own this machine the cycles will get better I guarantee you so that end I'm pretty much done for Air Max I'll get on later because I always save that the best to last in my vlogs um, even though there was a caterpillar coaster here and even though I did ride the one at Clacton uh, roughly about a month ago it's just not my thing and I only rode the one at Clacton just because there wasn't really that much of a choice at the time with a couple of rides being down so I'm going to give the caterpillar a pass like I always do now this one I definitely can't give a pass so Thriller needs to be a Matterhorn at which is um, owned by Richard Hart. He bought these from Anderson and Roland last year and debuted with them at this very same ground on this very same position. And I just saw it going backwards. So I can't miss it. I, think, I, I can't even recall the last time I went on one that goes backwards. So let's hop on Thriller on the next cycle. But anyway, here we go. And there you have it. A Sabima Matterhorn going on backwards. The only Matterhorn I've ever done, I think, that does go backwards is Ice Jet, but that is a Bertus machine. This is a Sabima, and I never seem to see these go backwards. Seeing this go backwards, couldn't miss it. And here we are on Thriller. Sorry? Hero 7. 
anyway, here we are on Frilla. Thriller. Operated by Richard's son, Henry, who does a spectacular job of running this machine. And it's... It's a very well presented Matterhorn. There's Air Max going. Well, I'm ready. The question is, is everybody else? <laughs> Let's go, girls. Is she supposed to be getting back to the Starstruck studio? I can't even recall when I last went backwards on this model of battle. Probably can't hear me all the screaming. I'll save it when I get off. Oh yes! <laughs> It was absolutely phenomenal. That was fantastic. Thank you for riding with us today. <sighs> Still got the answers on a roller name on the rounding boards. I would have thought that Richard or Henry would have taken them off by now, but wow. Well, I absolutely loved that. That is easily one of the best ran. So Beamer Matterhorns in the UK. It's definitely up there with James Rogers' machine, which I caught at Kingsport and uh, Tewkesbury in 2021. That Matterhorn, phenomenally well ran, and this one here is definitely right up there with it. And a backward cycle on this model. Wow, really, <laughs> quite a loss for words there. But um, pretty much done everything in this area for now. So I'm gonna move on to uh, the stuff down in this area over there. Okay, so here we have the No Limit Technical Park Loop Fighter, which doesn't look like it's gonna be running today. Um, I can see Darren Jr. and uh, one of his um, 
mate, so <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know his name. I don't know your name if you're watching this. I'm so sorry. Um, but no limit look fighter doesn't look like it's going to be running today, which is um, oh well, no biggie. Um, I was hoping to get some footage of it, but um, hopefully it will give more traction over to some of the older uploads that I've done. So no limit. I'm not that fussed about at the moment. But however. Yeah. This is something that I've not actually seen for quite a while. Um, last time I went on a wave swinger was at Breen Theme Park in August 2021. But um, I've not actually seen this one since Halloween 2020. So pretty much just before we went into the second lockdown. And <laughs> this is Chris Dan's machine, which has been to Thunderworld before. But I think it's its first time back here in what, four years? But um, while it's something of a rarity, <laughs> yeah, so while it's something of a rarity, I don't see these very often, let's hop on it. wave swinger which um i think it's a bit of a damn shame because these are quite fun when ran really well and the funny thing about this particular wave swinger is that it was built by lamborghini which i know is going to throw a lot of people off but that's not lamborghini the car company that's lamborghini a separate company uh, lamborghini rides srl uh based in italy but wow ho -ho! This wave swinger has got some real, real kicks to it. <laughs> it feels a bit talky as well. Like a lot of talk in the gearbox, I'd imagine. Which probably more helps give it a boost. But yeah, it's a damn shame that, uh, actually the other thing as well you may have noticed, the loot fights are no limit. It's now running, yes. Um, I won't be getting an on-ride of that just yet because I've literally just done one for the Fair Ride channel. I just want to do some stuff for this vlog first and then I'll get back on it for the vlog. It's in the... <laughs> yeah, I didn't get quite a long cycle with that, but I can't really blame them given how quiet it's been. Mind you, a two minute cycle, pretty damn good for a, um, for a fun park setting like this. Or are we going down? Oh wait, so, I thought we were going down then, but we are going down just right now. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And there goes the go gate, so I haven't seen that running much today. That's actually a lot more fun than I initially remember, remember it being. Um, it's a very well rag way swinger. Again, I hadn't caught this in a while. Um, now, Loop Fighter, I'll be catching that later. The Go Gator I'm def is a no-go for me because I don't do uh, roller coasters on that scale. But while it's in front of me, um, this I actually haven't done yet, which is uh, the Sizzler Twist. Um, and yeah, while it's literally just finished, I'll be able to get on the next cycle. So I haven't got the chance to jump onto this today, so let's do it. Ah, I love the sound, the, the hydraulic sound this thing makes. But here we are on the Sizzler, which is, um, it's currently having some lighting issues, but that was, that's, that's from um, water damage to the flasher box caused by the rain. But nonetheless, 
still a really good looking machine. And it's okay, back. Hold tight. Let's go. hardly recognisable from the previous owner that had it. Well, because Darren bought this during these but during the first lockdown and managed to pick it up uh, before the fun night of the Tropicana in the summer 2020 when they're allowed to open again. And it's unrecognisable from when Raymond Armstrong had this. It feels like a completely different machine. It rides very nicely soon. Also, I've noticed it has more um, RGB floodlights. Okay, let's go fast again already. Quite a few more on than the last time I remember seeing this. Okay, let's go slide to the end and squats your friend. Here we go. I don't have a friend. All on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the other thing, yesterday I rode a Mark III Sizzler in Bath, which was Henry Studd's machine. And even though that is a really, really well rounded for a Mark III, but when you compare the two in terms of riding and handling, this, which is a Mark I, and Studd's, which is a Mark III, they are very, very different machines to ride. the night sky coming in all the rides are definitely going to start looking better I better not sing actually to save your ears god damn it Ricky <laughs> Some of the Dodgems, given they're typically associated with Ferrari and other supercar brands. But I don't think the Dodgers are playing okay, any music. Right, let's go fast all the time. Get ready. Here we go. We definitely haven't seen the best of this machine yet, and here it comes. cycle that's and for a setting like this that really surprises me Indescribably phenomenal cycle, probably one of the best I've ever had. 
not just on any Mark 1 Sizzler, but on any Sizzler in general. I, <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from that because of how good that cycle was. It was, <laughs> and five minutes as well for Thunderworld. I'm very impressed with that. So moving on to the Sizzler, to the Ultimate Waltzer. Now, to think that this is already a four-year-old machine and it made its debut at this exact same event in this exact same position. Uh, very first time in 2019, fresh out of the firm in the, on the outskirts of Bristol. And playing a bit of pendulum, so let's hop on the waltzer. <laughs> I don't think I've actually ridden this machine during night time or close to night time. But either way, here we go on Ultimate Waltzer. is better. Charlie said, Charlie! Oh my god! Please. What is it?
Johnny is holding back on this machine. And the neon is working. Oh, God. Easily. I don't think a fair trade cycle has ever wiped me out like this has done. But I am wiped out. Thank you for riding with us today. Right, so I've ridden uh, a handful of fair trade machines, but I will say this. That was single-handedly the best cycle I have just had on any fair trade machine that I have been on. Nobody held back on there. I don't know that Ricky will take that as a huge compliment, but um, should be fine for batch at the moment. Now, one thing I do want to include in this vlog is the Stodgems, because I always say on this channel how much how much of a fan I am of the Bertelsen cars. Um, I, will I be vlogging it? I, I, I'd have probably tempted not to do an on-ride POV after the last time at Claxton, where a kid just tried uh, bumping into me head-on, trying to get on camera. But um, you know what? Let's do this. As a fan of, um, sorry, let me just get out of this tight spot. <laughs> yeah, so, um, there we go again. So, um, as I was saying, as a fan of um, Burtis and Dodgems, especially the New York models right here, they, I just simply just couldn't not include these in the vlog, but I seem to be having issues with my um, car at the moment because I don't think that the, uh, the wire is... Yeah, so I'm not going as... <laughs> of all the cars I could have picked, I ended up with the one that doesn't seem to be scraping on the chicken wire so much. But nonetheless, I don't think hers is just getting on the top of the chicken wire very well. So this is why I think there are some showmen who do use rollers instead of wires. I know that um, Alan Jenkins uses them on his uh, Revachons, but oh. but I'm having sort of connection issues. <laughs> I would say that I think my knee is adjusted, but given how many bolts I'm probably going through, doing it while the track is active, definitely not the wisest decision in the world. But uh, God, it's a free for all, and like no one's supposed to be going one way around the track. Well, it's weird because my lights aren't cutting out. It's a bloodbath. It's a mess. Ah! <laughs> Absolutely insane. Do you want to go My lights actually. Yeah, my lights are working. So is it an issue of the drive? I don't know. Uh, there's the wave swinger. Looking really nice at night. Right, so I think... <laughs> Oh well, <laughs> still had fun nonetheless. 
Well, it was a little bit disappointing that I ended up with the car that had the drive issues. Um, and despite it being a really hectic on that track, it was, I guess that's what made it so fun. And as we can see here, we can really see how much better the rides are looking at night. Now, coming back while the queues, there's, there's barely a queue for No Limit, the Loop Fighter. So, uh, let's get back on this for a second time. I didn't include the, the first time in the vlog because I was filming that for Ferrari Euphoria, but I'm going on it for a second time for the vlog. goes the floor on no limits and I didn't think I was going to be riding this today because um, I know that uh, Darren was having some technical gremlins as far as I'm aware with the machine but it's up and running finally and here we go on what if I may say is probably the best looking loop fighter in the UK I know that some fans of Atmosphere are probably going to come at me for that one, but uh, come at me, bro. <laughs> this is early days. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> now, the cycle has been varying, so are the cars going to rock first, or are we going to go all the way over first? Oh, <laughs> Well, judging from the angle we're currently at, we don't seem to be going any higher, so I'd imagine the cars are going to start rocking. And I stand corrected. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah. Well, it's a nice view at least. You want the sky swing for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh, it's coming soon, surely. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so disoriented. I'm so disoriented. <laughs> they spin your stomach, that one just spins your brain. <laughs> I think it's a shame there hasn't been much music at this event today. Um, probably good for me because that means I don't get so many copyright claims, but in terms of the atmosphere, I think it is a damn shame. And I'm guessing the reason for that, probably council orders. Because there's nothing coming from the speakers on a limit. Air Max hasn't had music all day, which is funny. I was probably scared. <laughs> some rides have music, some rides don't. Oh well. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, I know I say that a lot after I've just come off of certain things, but that was a good cycle. I know that in some cases loop fighters can be a bit rough, but that was nice and smooth. And with that ride done, there is one final ride I have to get out of the way. I said I was saving this the best to last, but just before that, I just want to showcase something. So even though I don't typically ride Miami's, there are some I do really like to showcase. For example, Darren's Freefall. Um, 
probably one of the best looking Harry Steer machines. A very unique themed as well. Typically, since Miami's tend to be club themed, Ibiza themed, you know, you name it. But um, it was quite different. And uh, loving the light package that was actually done by James Danter. Uh, typically colour coordinated. Uh, top sign doesn't seem to be working or is probably just switched off for now but um i'm very tired and <laughs> and my heads are probably a little bit dizzy from riding around all day but yeah this isn't an all rgb light package but it can have static colors as well for example like it's doing on the border now and there's going back to pixels so even though, like I just literally just said, don't tend to ride around me, but I wanted to give this one a special mention. Um, and so with that, um, I'll get a better view just away of all the games there until, hang on a minute. Okay, so the time has come to save the very best to the very last, my favorite ride in the whole of the UK, I would dare to say, probably even the world, the Mondo Capriolo, and in this case, with it being Air Max, and there's barely a queue. Um, now, I'm pretty much sure you've got the, the idea of how it works. You've probably seen it in the background. I would get a bit of off-ride footage, but while there's literally no queue, I just want to hop on this thing and get riding. Right, so, the absolute monster that is Air Max, as I said, saved the very best to the very last. And if you've seen my previous vlogs containing this machine, or had seen the videos on my other channel, you will know why. Um, there's also a thing that happened earlier where um, the pocket that I keep my Canon camera in, uh, the zipper broke, because I never go on rides. Probably can't hear me well with that, but I don't go on rides without zipped pockets, typically. So the camera is sitting right above the speaker on the platform just there. So hopefully nothing does happen to it, and if anything does, hopefully I'll catch them on the GoPro doing it. But in the meantime, let's not worry about that and enjoy the moment that I am... Well, I the one reason why my the Capriolo is my all-time favorite ride because of the speed the way you fit into your face that Darren is teasing us. Oh, We're gonna be able to... Yes! Give it some! Yes! Yes! In terms of intensity, you are never ever gonna beat this. Oh god! Oh my head! That went straight to the brain. on me that this has
absolutely incredible. I think that's... Mind you, nearly a four minute cycle there. I'm very happy with that. Oh boy. Uh, I was I was initially I didn't want to say this but I was I was torn between the Booster Max and the Capriolo but this definitely blows the Booster Max out of the water in terms of what it's just done to me Oh my god I tell you what and I probably said this in the POV I forgot but because of how that went straight to the brain no ride or machine on the planet can ever have the impact on me that this one just did. God, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't even know where to start. But it's just that how it went to the brain in terms of the inverted dive, but easily the best ride and machine I've ever done and, prob and ever will do, because I don't think that anything that ever comes onto the market is going to top this. And with Air Max done, I've got, I think, 13 minutes of ride time. So I'm gonna see what, else, what I can get on. Uh, maybe a couple of rides or one more. Maybe I'll probably get on the Waltzer just for the sake of it. Um, Crazy Mouse doesn't look to have that much of a queue, so I'll get on that while it's so low. But um, my GoPro is literally about to die. So I'm gonna stop recording there and I'll wrap up the vlog when I'm outside of the park. So I said I was going to wrap up the vlog from outside of the event, um, but basically by the time I got out and with how dark everything was getting because of all the lights going off and the only lighting being where street lamps are and I was being surrounded by members of the public being complete and utter nuisances. Um, it basically meant that I couldn't wrap up the vlog from outside of the event because of how dark it was getting. Um, so I'm going to have to wrap up the vlog here at home. And it's actually the day after um, I went to Thunderworld, which was a really, really good day out. Um, one thing I will admit, though, I did have a couple of scares with a couple of members of the public. For example, there was one woman who was complaining to uh, one of the ride operators. Um, saying that, well I say, I'm not gonna, okay, let me try that one more time. Sorry, I kind of messed up the words there. Um, but what happened was there was one woman complaining to uh, a member of staff and one of the people um, behind the event. I'm not gonna say uh, who it was or what their role was for their protection, but there was a woman going up to them and claiming that somebody was taking photos of their children. And she was right in front of me um, while she was doing this and she never made eye contact with me, and I thought, well, I'm literally right in front of you, why don't you just confront me and ask me questions? But thankfully, she obviously didn't mean me, because she went over to security, and security never approached me once, and they walked past me uh, quite a handful of times, and never made eye contact with me, and never want needed my attention or anything, so obviously she didn't mean me, and it was obvious that maybe it was a cycle after the one I filmed, because I was off filming uh, Meteorite while it was in action, while the Crazy Frog was going. Um, but the other thing was, while I was in the queue for Crazy Frog, there was another woman who just sat, sta who literally, I, she just stood there and was staring at me. And every time I was sort of turned my head for just a few milliseconds, she would look me dead in the eye. And I was just praying that she would be gone. Um, by the time I was on the run, and thankfully she was, and I never saw her again, and I never saw that woman again. But before this, actually, the first woman I mentioned was being a complete and utter liability to member of staff and as well as um, members of the public uh, before the event even opened. She was outside of the gate complaining about uh, how, for example, you can't use cash, you can only use card, even though cash is per perfectly acceptable. She was swearing a few times while there were children present and especially little children just in general just being a complete and utter nuisance to not only staff but also visitors of the event and i'm gonna be honest i don't normally address or call out behavior like that but normally i just let it slide but not that because mortified the fact that a grown woman 
can talk to people and act around the people in the way that she did, I think she was disgusting, I think she was despicable, and I better just leave it at that. Um, but other than that, Thunderworlds, there is nothing bad I have to say about it. It's always a well-ran, well-presented show, and I especially love the, um, the new uh, entrance box that they've written. Well, I say new, it's actually, refer it's actually the same one, but it's just been refurbished. And it definitely has more of that theme park feel to it, rather than a mobile travelling fair. Um, which will go down with the theme park enthusiasts quite a lot. Um, and I don't really have a lot to say at this point. Um, now, from next week, I would say that I will be resuming with the Clacton Pier videos. However, there is one thing I do have in mind. I'm not going to say what it is yet, just in case it doesn't happen. But um, it's something I'm pretty excited about, and I will be giving it some coverage if I do get to... Um, where it will be debuting at a fair um, in the middle area of the UK. But until whatever comes next week, goodbye for now and see you later.